Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number five. As always, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210, Chapter 00, Intro to Excel.xlsm, go to my college website and download. Hey, here in this sheet tab, we're in the cell references sheet tab, we want to talk about cell references. Hey, let's click in this cell right here, and I'm actually going to hold my control down and roll the wheel on my mouse. That's a quick way to zoom in. Now what I want to do is I want to calculate this value minus this average. And then when I get down to this cell, I want to take that 24 right there and subtract this value. Let's go ahead and try it. I'm going to click in this cell B7 and say equals. I'm going to click on that cell right there, type minus, and then click on that cell right there. These are cell references. We're not going to type the number 23 in right here, and we're not going to type the number 23.5. You never want to build a formula like that because it won't update when you change the values. I'm going to click Escape. I'm going to say equals, I'm going to use my arrow key, arrow key to get that cell reference one to my left, minus, and then I'm going to go down arrow and over one arrow. That is a formula with cell references and a minus sign. Now I'm going to hit, I'm going to read this formula to, to you. Equals one cell to my left minus A13. I'm going to hit enter. And now I'm going to say equals one cell to my left minus, and I'm going to go get my A13. See how we've used A13 twice now? Now I'm going to hit Enter, equals one cell to my left. The blue one's always to my left, but I'm always going to subtract the same cell, A13. Enter, equals one to my left, minus A13. Now, since we used A13 in the formula, one, two, three, four, we had four different formulas in four different cells, but we used A13 each time. There's a much better way. I'm going to highlight all of those cells and hit the delete key. Then I'm going to click in the top cell and I'm going to redo this formula. Equals one cell to my left minus, and now I'm going to click on this cell. And since I'm going to use A13 every single time, we need to figure out how to lock this cell references. Now, there's a secret code that you have to put before the A, which means column, and before the 13, which means row. And this secret symbol is actually arbitrary. It's a dollar sign. But instead of typing the dollar signs in, which you never want to do, there's a keyboard shortcut that will automatically put the dollar signs in for you. And the way it works is if your cursor's flashing next to a cell reference, just hit F. Four. The F4 key puts two dollar signs in, and now Excel understands that you want to always use this formula, this cell reference right here, as you copy copy the formula down. I'm going to hit Enter and then click on that cell and click on the fill handle with my angry rabbit and click and drag. Now I'm going to click in the last cell and hit F2 key, which is Edit. No way. That formula is perfect. It's 1 to my left minus always A13. This is called a relative cell reference because that cell reference for this formula will always look 1 to my left wherever it's copied. This two dollar signs using the F4 key says forget it. This formula wherever you copy it is always going to look at A13. And in this class, there'll be lots of amazing examples where we save a lot of times. Here, we just saved enough time. Instead of typing four fo formulas, we only had to type one formula. Hey, let's look at another example of relative and absolute. Now here, we have, and I'm going to actually make this column much smaller right now, just so we can uh, see this closer in. Let's see if I can do that again. I just want to make this much. Well, there we go. Much better. Now, notice I've hidden the rows between 19 and 74. This is actually a huge data set. If you were to highlight 19 row and 74 and say right click, and there's an unhide, you can't see it at the bottom here. Shh. 
highlight the two rows, right click unhide, it would instantly unhide all of those. I'm going to control Z to hide them because that's a convenient way to show a whole data set with, with a bunch of uh, cells hidden. That way we can fit it on the screen. Now what we want to do here is we want to count the number of times Ford is um, listed in this car types list, the number of times in this cell right here that Toyota is listed, and the number of times that Honda is listed. We're going to use the count if function. We're actually going to use a built-in function. I'm going to click in cell D16. And the symbol that means start a formula is equals. And then I'm going to say type count if. Remember in 2007, once you see the blue on the function you want, just hit tab, count if. Count if is pretty straightforward. It just needs the range of all the values and the criteria. Well, the range is all of these, so I'm going to click in the top cell right here. And then I'm going to hold my control and shift key. This is a fast way to highlight the whole range. We could just click and drag, but there's um, a keyboard shortcut, especially if these rows were not hidden, we definitely want to use this trick. I'm going to click here, and then you hold Control and Shift, and then hit the down arrow. It highlights the whole range. Notice here it says properly A16 all the way to A74. This function right here, count if, and this range will see all the values, even if they're hidden. Now, you type a comma to get to the next argument, so I'm going to type comma. Notice how the bold jumps to criteria. Now, what is the criteria? This Ford right here. Now, I'm going to hit uh, type close parentheses and then enter 19. Now, I'm going to say equals count to if. I'm going to highlight this whole range, control shift down arrow, comma, one cell to my left close parentheses, enter, zero. Did we get that right? Oh, look at that. We have A7 to A16. What happened there? We better highlight that range here. Click in the top cell, A16, and then Control Shift Down Arrow. Oh, I must have hit Up Arrow. Enter. Notice when you want to edit a formula, you make a mistake. You click in the cell and then hit F2. It puts it into edit mode, and then you can edit what part, whatever part you want. Notice we've used A16 to A74 again. I'm going to hit Enter equals count if. I'm going to click in the top cell, Control Shift Down Arrow, comma one cell to my left. Notice we're using the same A16 to A74 again. Now, instead of typing in three formulas like that, much better. I'm going to delete those. Click in the top cell, equals count if. Click in A16, Control Shift Down Arrow, and now watch this. We just hit our F4 key. Because we're going to use this range in all three uh, cells um, listed here, we need to lock it. That way we don't have to type in three formulas. We can just type in one formula. I'm going to hit the F4 key. It puts the dollar signs in. And then comma, one cell to my left. And that formula will work all the way down. This is locked because it's going to have to look at that range each time. But this one will move. That's a relative cell reference. Con Enter. And then I'm going to click in this cell. And I'm going to point to my fill handle, and with my angry rabbit, that crosshair, I'm going to double click and send it down. Now I'm going to click in the last cell to verify, F2, edit, and sure enough, it worked. The green one moved, relative cell reference, and the blue range remained locked. So that's relative and absolute cell references. Those are the uh, two types of cell references we're going to use in this class. There's actually uh, four types of cell references, but for this class, we're only going to use two. All right, next we need to talk about formatting. So we're going to click on this, and when we come back in our next video, we'll talk about formatting and then a last little bit about percentages. All right, see you next video.